So uh, we have with us today a very, very special guest, guys. Um, I know you're all pretty excited. Just a little background information. She graduated from DePaul University in Chicago. And uh, as you all very well know, she played the role of Taylor McKessie in High School Musicals 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> However, she is here today as the United Nations Youth Champion for the International Year of Youth. And she's here to talk to you guys, to talk with us about problems that, that we are facing today in today's world. Not necessarily only concerning the Millennium Development Goals, but any problems that you may have concerning your own close circle of friends as well. Thank you so much. This is um, this is amazing. It's, I was just uh, telling your administrators that I, I feel very at home here because when I um, when I was in South Carolina, I went to a public middle school and a public uh, elementary school, and I experienced bullying and all those things, and had girls pushing me up against the lockers, telling me, you know, you was talking about my man, and, you know, and I was horrified and scared, and you know, I have to say that I ran, I ran to uh, my Episcopal school, which is where I ended up, and I felt very at home, and um, and I'm so I I feel very comfortable here with all of you and I'm excited because I know that you are an audience that really gets it. I know that you are an audience that uh, can be truly impacted by knowledge and by understanding of what's going on in the world and I also know that you have every single thing that you could possibly need to really make a big difference and to inspire other people to make a difference. So this is a very exceptional opportunity that we have uh, to spend this time together today. So just to give you a tiny bit of background as to how I went from High School Musical to the United Nations, the short of it is that after High School Musical was over, I went through this sort of period where I realized that there wasn't a billboard, a magazine, an interview, or an uh, encounter on a red carpet that was going to change the person that I was inside. That all of this work and all of these things and being in a billion dollar franchise that broadcasted me all over the world didn't change me. I was still the same person. And I think a lot of times when I talk to young people, they have this idea that getting somewhere is going to change everything. By the time I get here, that everything's going to be different. But the reality is that I literally skyrocketed to success, and everything was still the same. So after that, I really took a long, hard look at myself, and I said, okay, you've done this movie now, you have this platform, what are you going to do with it? So I decided to take the, what I consider, reason why High School Musical, which is what is as successful as it was, which is all of you, and I decided to give something back to you, and to give you what I wish that I would have had when I was a young person, and that's open dialogue conversation. So I started a website called Gimme Mo, and Gimme Mo is basically a platform for young people to talk about the things that really matter to them in an open way. It's not like the back to school special version of things. It's real talk. We are talking about everything from self esteem to bullying to youth homelessness to global issues like clean drinking water and gender equality. And we are really congregating to let people realize and understand that this generation of youth really does want to make an impact and is tired of receiving the same information over and over and over and over again. So I created this platform for that, for the youth. And then, simultaneously, the International Year of Youth was launched. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I call it my divine appointment because truly it was something that was just happened simultaneously. And the United Nations, I think, saw that I had a genuine passion for young people and made, I mean, they literally created this position. I'm the first ever UN Youth Champion. And so what I'm doing is I'm traveling around the world for the next six months to try to shine a light on the most pressing issues that are facing our youth. But also, I feel that a lot of news is bad news. And that really bugs me. Because the reality is that every time I meet young people, I see their excellence. I see your potential, your creativity, your ingenuity, your energy, and all of the ways that you are truly contributing to your societies. So it's my mission to make good news about young people cool so that we can inspire more people to follow that path as well. Oh, look at that. So this is uh, my website. This is the Gimme Mo website. 
um, which you guys can all check out later. And there's going to be a flyer that goes around with the Facebook and the Twitter and the, all those things. This is, yeah, oh God, embarrassing. Um, <laughs> this is the best uh, contribution that you can make to this movement right now, is to help spread the word if you're passionate about these global issues and uh, the world, which I know that you all are. So um, I invite Ben to come back out, yeah, and we can get this party started, yeah? Okay, um, so I'm sure you want to take a couple of questions from, from the audience, yeah, just a couple, um, based on, you know, generally what the MDGs are, any problems that they have. Absolutely, or anything that you're today. interested in about me too, you know, this isn't the Mo Show, but uh, I may come from, I, I don't, my path to High School Musical wasn't uh, as glossy as it may seem. So if you have any questions just about what it took also to pursue a dream that seemed a little bit out of reach. I'm from South Carolina, which is not very close to Hollywood. And uh, when I came home from the film, for instance, uh, I came home you know, after shooting this movie to a three-day eviction notice on my door. And a lot of people may not know that. Because I hadn't paid my rent for several months. I'd worked a ton of different day jobs. I'd been babysitting and, you know, working at a gym. I was like, doing private training, personal assisting, and I mean, constantly. I literally worked between 45 and 70 hour weeks sometimes. So when I got the film, I was more excited about the fact that I was going to have a warm bed to sleep in and that I was going to be fed every day than the fact that I was playing Taylor McKessie and that Corbett Blue was in it. <laughs> like, you know? So these are some of the things that uh, people don't always know because what you see is the end result. You don't see the work that it takes to get there. Right. And so how do you think that, that experience then has, has helped you uh, take on this sort of role, this, this youth champion? You no, know, I think it gave me perspective because the biggest challenge for me was uh, accepting abundance. I had lived so close to the ground my whole life where literally paycheck to paycheck or no paycheck to paycheck and I had to prioritize, I had to understand that some of the things that uh, people consider necessities to daily, to daily life were things that I considered luxuries like television or internet. Uh, I had dial up you know, while, while I was filming the movie and I didn't um, have a television and when I did it was one of those old school 70s televisions with the big old back and it was wooden and I had to use a hanger, they call, they're called rabbit ears and you put the hanger in and you, you go like this, but I'd have to sit really still because if I walked or moved it would get fuzzy and if I sneezed it would get really fuzzy. So, <laughs> so, it was, uh, so that was the experience that I had and, and I think one of the biggest uh, experiences that really shaped um, my my, who I am today is that while High School Musical was increasing in success, I was kind of going through a personal meltdown because I was living in a studio apartment on a futon where I could feel the rods through the futon. So, like I said, I was very excited to go sleep in a nice bed and you know had my '70s television. You know, I was able to afford a computer after the film. But when it started to rise to success, I would literally go on a tour, for instance, where we weren't getting paid, but we were Team People's 25 Hottest Stars Under 25 photo shoot. We were staying at the Ritz-Carlton in New York City. We were going flying to Sydney, Australia, staying at the Park Hyatt, which is the nicest hotel on the water with a view of the bridge and the opera house at the same time. <laughs> Luxurious, right? 